fellowship is much deeper than relationship. Relationship you can have just through, you know, if someone's born to a, a, a mother and a father, that father gave the seed for that child to be born. But if that father's never involved with that child, the relationship is father-son, but there's no fellowship. The fellowship is where the power is. And so it's having fellowship with God. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We've been having a look at what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, there's so many confusing voices in our lives. We got the enemy speaking to us. We got so many advisors speaking to us, people giving us different ideas of what we should and shouldn't do. And yet we know that there is God's perfect plan, God's perfect will. How do I tap into that perfect will of God? How can I know the will of God? Well, Jesus said that we as his sheep hear his voice. And if he said we hear his voice, we do. We can learn how to hear his voice and then how to draw into that wisdom. Enjoy this. I'll see you later. Open your Bible, please, at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. We've been, we started last week having a look at learning to walk with God. Walk with God. How many of us want to see heaven invading earth? We want to see the supernatural manifesting. Now, it's not like we're asking God to do the supernatural for supernatural sake. God is involved in your life. Your Born again experience was a supernatural act. It was the human spirit that had died because of sin that was born again, recreated in the image of God. And it was done without any human intervention through any physical approach, trying to do something physically. It was trusting a supernatural God that if I believe with my heart Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with my mouth that He's my Lord and Savior, the miracle would happen. And it did. And it did. It is, if someone says, I wish I could see a miracle, just look forward to the next altar call and you will see the greatest miracle ever. To me, it is the greatest miracle than even, uh, even if someone had their arm chopped off and a brand new arm grew completely in place of that arm. The born-again experience is a greater miracle. Because that's somebody who would have gone to hell for eternity and are now headed for heaven. Amen. Amen. Living in the presence of God. Now, God also intervenes in our life. If we would believe for the supernatural, we will see the supernatural. But we have to stretch out and believe for that. And so, if we're going to see the supernatural walking, working in our lives... We have to walk with God. Because God can only move where He's invited. He only moves where He's believed. He only moves where people permit it. He only moves when we step into those things. God Himself said He doesn't say anything, He doesn't do anything, unless He first tells His prophets. We wouldn't be saved if we didn't hear it from somebody. I wouldn't have got healed if I didn't find out from the Word of God that He's the healer. And so if we're going to see the supernatural, we need to be walking with God. If you're walking with God, working with God, we will see the supernatural. And so we're talking much more than just the relationship. We're talking about fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. Fellowship, fellowship is much deeper than relationship. Relationship you can have just through, you know, if someone's born to... A, a, a mother and a father, that father gave the seed for that child to be born. But if that father's never involved with that child, the relationship is father-son. 
but there's no fellowship. The fellowship is where the power is. And so it's having fellowship with God, spending time with God, listening for God's voice, not just us doing all the talking, just getting into a room and just, you know, talk, 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 and give God a big, long shopping list. It's listening for His leading, His guidance, His direction. Remember, he said in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. And like last week, we had a decision. We asked how many of you know that you're born again, and how many you know that you know that you know that you know that you're born again. No one could take it from you. We learned that is God speaking in your heart telling you you're a child of God. Every time you wonder if you're born again, I don't think anyone goes there, I wonder if I'm still saved. No, you just have to spend time with God and you know that you are. He loves you. I said He loves you. The only reason we ever feel separate from God is if we allow sin to get in the way and our own guilt and our own condemnation. Let the devil lie to us. That's why it's important that whenever we are, if we're ever dealing with the guilt of sin, just go ahead and confess it. Just confess that sin. God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of that sin and of all unrighteousness. Amen? So it's very important that we walk close to God. And so we saw that one of the biggest questions a human can have is, why are we here? What's the reason I'm on this earth? What's my purpose? And we saw that he showed us in Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's go there. Jeremiah 1. Verse 4, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Before you were born, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Isn't that interesting? God knew you before you were born. You didn't take on life when you were conceived in your mother's womb. All that happened was, your father gave a seed to the egg in your mother's womb, and that created a physical body that God put his spirit into. From his presence, he is the giver of life. Your life, every single one of us, before we ever entered that flesh egg fertilized, before you entered that, you already lived. You already existed in God. Now, I know you don't remember it. But you don't remember when you were a baby in your mother's arms either. Isn't that right? So, we are trust the Word of God. God says, I knew you before you were even created. So, that means God knew you. He knew you. He didn't know the thought of you. He knew you. So, you existed. And then, when your body was conceived... God put that spirit into you, into your body. You, you are the spirit into that body. That's why we have no right for us to make the decision to end that life. It's not like it doesn't have life. The moment it's conceived, a spirit is put into that, into that body. And so God sent that spirit with a purpose. With a purpose. God knows what you're called to do. I wish I knew what to do. God will tell you. He'll lead you. He'll show you what it is. Not one individual is on this planet by accident. Now the circumstances may have been, you know, parents weren't expecting you. Maybe something happened tragically. I don't know. But the fact is that you are not here by accident. Don't ever let the devil ever lie to you. Maybe I was never meant to be on the earth. Yes, you are. And when you were put here, God had a specific plan for you. And it's the devil that's tried. He's tried so often to kill children because he knows when they get into this earth and they start to do what God's called them to do, it weakens his system. Yeah. If anyone ever finds out their call of God and answers to it, it weakens what the enemy is able to do. So he'll try and kill babies before they're even born. Every time God was going to bring a redeemer to the earth, he'd try to kill all the children. Isn't that right? And today, 
He's trying to kill more children than ever before in history. But family of God, we, we will not stand for it. We're going to keep righteousness in place. How many you say amen to that? Amen. And so we understand that God has put you here for a reason, for a plan, for a purpose. And it's up to us to discover what it is. It's not up to your pastor even to find out who you are. My job is to equip you and train you and give you the access to what God has given us as information so that we are able to get to a place. But you will hear it in your own heart. Let me show you some of this from the Word of God. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. How many of you know that if God prepared you, that means He's given you all the gifts you need to carry it out, all the talent you need, all the ability you need. God's not going to create a fish without the ability to breathe underwater. So whatever you call to do, God's already put inside of you. So if He's gone to all the effort of creating you with your gift, talents, and abilities, and to put you in this earth, and to get you to a place where now you can hear His Word, how many of you know God wants you to know who you are more than you want to know who you are? Because it's His plan and His purpose that He wants to carry out. And so He wants you to know. Lift your hand and say, my God wants me to know who I am and what I'm called to do. What He created me for. And if He wants me to know it, He's probably telling me already. So, so, all I need to do now is listen. That's what we're learning to do. How to hear. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Verse 1, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Underline, ministered to the Lord. Ministered to the Lord. Before I was saved, my life was in a mess. How many would agree with me? How many you would say amen? I'm not asking you to agree that my life was in a mess. How many you would, would say your life was also in a mess? And so when I first got saved, I needed lots of ministering to me. I thank God I had a pastor who didn't hold back what I needed to hear. He gave me everything I needed for my salvation, for my healing, for my deliverance, for my provision, for my protection. I listened to the word as he taught me. And it was daily that I was growing and seeing things healed in my life. How many of you know what I'm talking about? D just taking place, getting delivered in so many ways. So I was being ministered to. But family of God, we reach a point where we grow in Christ. Where I realize when you discover from the word of God, the day I was born again, I was blessed. I don't have to keep asking God to bless me anymore. The day I was saved, I was healed. And I'm going to walk in that healing. He's given me everything pertaining to life and godliness. He's blessed me with every spiritual blessing. Now, it may not be in my bank account yet, but I've learned to trust Him that when I need it, it'll be there. And I've learned to live that way. So I don't need to be ministered to all the time. I do need to spend time in the Word of God. I keep renewing my mind to the Word. I refresh myself in His presence. I worship Him so that I can be filled again and again, just like the disciples were in the book of Acts. That's, those things are important. But there are times when we should minister to God. I say, well, God doesn't need anything. Evidently, He does. Because, yes, yeah, Samuel was ministering to the Lord. I want to show you something that happened when he was ministering to the Lord. How many of you know God is love and he desires relationship with you? He desires fellowship with you. He wants to spend time with you. So if he wants to spend time with you and we don't give it to him, how many of you realize that is something that he wants and he's not getting? 
Now, it's not like that's going to knock him off his throne and he's going to become all depressed about it. We know who, we, who we're talking about. He doesn't need anything. But he does want your presence. He does want to spend time with you. And yes, Samuel is ministering to the Lord. I do that sometimes. During my prayer time, I say, Lord, I'm not here to get anything from you. I'm not even here to ask you for anything. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. In my, I'm just here to come and minister to you. You've all, you minister to me sometimes. I don't even ask for it. But I'm here to just, is there anything you want right now? Is there anything you need from me? See, sometimes God needs us to go and talk to somebody that everybody else has ignored his instructions on. God's trying to reach somebody, and he's spoken to this person, but they're too busy. He's asked that one to go, and they're not listening. He's asked this one, and they just keep sinning, and, you know, and they, so they can't hear his voice either. And he, and he wants to get to this person. And so sometimes I say, Lord, is there anything you need? And then he can say, yes, I need you to go speak to that one. Well, I need you to give this to that one. Amen. Amen. Ministering to the Lord. Everyone say, ministering to the Lord. Amen. So Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Eli is his mentor. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Verse 2. It came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. So I want you to get the picture. Eli is the old man, and he is sleeping, so on, in, probably in the next room. And Samuel is busy sleeping, and he hears someone call him, from his perspective. We've just read it's the Lord. The Lord calls him, Samuel! He Hears it so clearly, he runs to Eli, and he says, yes, I'm here. That's how clear he heard it, that he thought it was Eli. Because you see, the Bible says the word of the Lord was rare, so he wasn't raised to be listening for the voice of God. He thought Eli had called him. Look at verse Five. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, I did not call. Go lie down again. And so he went and he lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose, went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And so Eli answered and said, I didn't call you, my son. Go lie down again. So that's the second time. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Verse 8. The Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And then Eli perceived it's the Lord that had called the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be. If he calls you, you must say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. Everybody say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. See, sometimes people will hear. Now, we don't hear audibly. I'll explain it to you in a moment. Always. We don't always hear audibly. 
Most times not. Most Christians will never hear the audible voice of God. I'm going to tell you why in a moment. But we will hear, how many times have you said this, something told me? Well, why something? Somebody. And not somebody. If it's the truth. Now, you know the devil lies to you. Now, everybody seems to know the voice of the devil. The devil told me. The devil made me do it. But when God speaks, it is, you could call it an unction, a hunch, an inner witness, an intuition. It's just a knowing. You just know. You can't explain it. Sometimes when you're sleeping, you may even hear so clearly that when you wake up, it's like someone had just spoken in the room. And most of them go, oh, I thought someone was here. And they just pass it off as maybe it was a dream. Maybe it was just something, you know. But what we got to learn is say, recognize when we start getting those leadings, when we start realizing that's information I didn't have before. This is leading somewhere. I, why am I thinking this? Why am I being led this way? Why am I being read? We should stop at that moment and say, speak, Lord. I'm listening. Now remember the Bible says we no longer servants, we are sons. We are no longer servants, but sons. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. Now Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry. Say more excellent ministry. Inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. Underline better covenant. Lift your hand and say, I have a better covenant than the children of Israel under the old covenant. Now, family, if God spoke to the children of Israel under the old covenant, then under the new covenant, we have the same privilege, if not more so, under a better covenant. Before you were put on the planet, God already had a plan for when you get here. As a child of God, we learn from His Word that we are to be led by His Spirit. I have to be listening for what He has already done. What is God saying He wants done? Now, if God is speaking to us all the time and we are not hearing Him, then we need to draw aside from what's distracting us so that we can focus ourselves on hearing His voice. We're going to talk about learning to walk with God, how we are led by the Spirit. In this powerful series, Alan Back shares practical steps to help you hear God's voice. He will help you to discover the key to receiving from God, as well as how to draw from God's immeasurable wisdom to manifest God's mysteries through your life. I believe that by the end of this series, each one of us will know exactly what we're called to do and you'll flourish in it. Get the series on either MP4 or MP3 and learn to walk with God by being led by His Spirit. Jesus said that His sheep hear His voice and they know Him and they follow Him. So if Jesus said, I hear His voice, then I hear it. And sometimes we can say, but I've never heard it. Well, as we've already learned now, He said we do hear it. And the only way we're going to hear His voice is if we position ourselves for it. And whatever we receive in the body of Christ is by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So I encourage you, get a hold of the series. And the more you listen to it and you go through the Scriptures, listening to the Word being spoken to you, your faith for it will rise up. And before you know it, you will also be hearing the voice of God and you can be led by the Spirit of God. So get yours today. Now, my friend, the most important thing that you can hear today is the call to salvation. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He gave his life for you. And then he rose from the dead so that you can know your sins are forgiven. And so if you've never yet received Jesus, do it today. Pray this prayer with me right there while you're watching. Say this. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life 
so that I could have life. I believe that. And then you rose from the dead, and today you are alive. And so I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. And today I commit my life to follow you, to know that as you lead me, I will know that I'll walk in the things of God. And one day, I will leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you've made that commitment, you are born again, a child of God. Now, I've got something that I'd like to send you. It's a card that's going to help you understand what's just happened and some guidelines now that you are a Christian. This great study program is going to help you read through your Bible in a year. And then I want to send you the CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. That's our free gift to you. We'll even pay the postage. Just write to me at that address on the screen or call us on that phone number. As soon as we got your details, we'll send it off to you. Well, that's all we got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.